We are tracking a developing La Nina and the winter impacts we could see heading into the rainy season. I'm ABC 10 Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods and this always tends to get a little bit of excitement when we talk about El Nino or La Nina given the past of what we've seen in terms of catastrophic flooding in parts of California. Now the area of focus that we're looking at for sea surface temperatures warming or cooling is called Nino 3.4. So here's the continental United States just up to the north of us here. This is going to be South America and it's generally kind of in between the eastern and western Pacific and we're looking at our sea surface temperatures warmer or cooler than normal and there is a threshold right now we're in what's called a neutral phase and that's because we're less than 0.5 degrees Celsius above or below normal. Now when we enter the La Nina phase that's when we're 0.5 degrees Celsius cooler than average and conversely El Nino is going to be that 0.5 degrees Celsius warmer than average. Again right now we're neutral but it is trending towards more favorable conditions into what looks like a more weak La Nina. Here's a look at some of the ensemble models that we've been looking at, dynamic and statistical models. That is in the green and the red kind of bold-faced lines there. And it does appear that we're going to stay in this neutral phase for the next couple of months, not really starting to see more of that amplification until roughly November. Again, Every month we continue to watch this to see if there's any sort of changes in this. This is a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies right now. And uh, again, it's a little hard to sometimes get your bearing when we're looking at a flat map. But here's the United States and then, of course, Central America. So uh, Central and South America. And this is where we're going to look right in this region right here. And you can see a lot of blue indicating cooler than average. It just hasn't met that threshold of that 0.5 degrees Celsius cooler than average yet it's trending that way and one of the things is these are just surface temperatures of the water when we go up underneath that we look at what is happening below the surface and our winds going to support moving that colder than average water towards the coast and then back towards that Nino 3.4 uh, area there. And it does indicate from these Kelvin waves that we're looking at those anomalies being a little bit cooler. Again, that's below the surface. And with the way that the winds are shaping up, it's very likely that we will see a developing La Nina phase of ENSO. All right, here's a look at the La Nina pattern and the precipitation pattern. That typically is what happened. Now I'm going to unfold a little bit about what happened with the last La Nina and you're going to see this doesn't always pan out. So it favors a wetter than average Pacific Northwest and extreme Northern California and drier Southern California as that jet stream predominantly is to the north of us. Again, that's the typical pattern but that's not always what happens. So here's a look at how all of this starts to shift with our equatorial Pacific waters. We see these weak trade winds. Again, we're going to be looking at basically a La Nina phase here. This is El Nino. That's what we're kind of coming out of. And then what's going to happen in the La Nina phase is we get stronger trade winds. That's going to allow that cooler water to kind of back up into that Nino 3.4 region and allow that La Nina to persist. Now what happens, as I mentioned, is typically a wetter than average Pacific Northwest, drier towards the southern part of the state. Statistically speaking, this is how each region of California has shaped up. Along the coast, in the northern part, it has been kind of equal wet to normal and favorably dry a little bit on the drier side for Central California. And here's where you see that pie chart really favoring a much drier than average Southern California. That being true as well for parts of the mountains. Uh, so unfortunately, we wouldn't necessarily want to see that because a third of our water supply comes from that snowpack. As we look at the state as a whole, you can see over uh, what has happened with weak La Ninas. And it does appear, as I mentioned, it is going to be a weaker phase of La Nina. And overall, weak La Ninas have been dry throughout the state. There have certainly been years, and you can pin pinpoint them here in 1995-96, where we had a much wetter than average, almost from central to northern California. 1964-65, kind of in the same category. And then 
Back in 1950-51, we had a huge snowpack, actually, for this year. So each year definitely has to be looked at independently. This is just more of a statistical analysis and overview of what we've seen. All right, let's break it down into both all uh, La Niñas, and then we'll talk about the weak, the moderate, and the strong. So precipitation averages, and you can see some of the averages here throughout the state. They uh, vary a little bit here when we take a look at all La Nina events together. But now let's break it down. Weak La Nina events, so this would be more in line of what we're expecting to see this time of year. We see more favorable conditions to the northern uh, part of the state, but not terribly bad through the southern parts of California. It's just near to slightly below average, whereas Northern California near to slightly above average. Okay, let's take a look at a moderate event. Now you may remember back in 2022-23, we had a moderate La Nina event. We had huge rain and historically a record setting snow in parts of the central and it was a record setter in the southern Sierra Nevada. So this was a huge water year for us. We See, typically near to slightly above average precipitation for Northern California and once again near to below for Southern California. When we take a look at strong La Nina events, it's near to slightly above for Northern and near to below average for Southern California. So there's really not too many shifts in what we see here, but overall it does appear that Northern California favors uh, a wetter than average than, say, Southern California. Okay, I mentioned that 2022-23 water year. Prior to that, so that was a moderate La Nina. I keep trying to not say El Nino, <laughs> La Nina. We were deep into drought. This is when the emergency drought declaration went into an effect throughout the entire state. We just had 19 counties last week come out of that because we saw dramatic improvements because of the water year 2022-23. We essentially dug out of drought in just one water year in that moderate La Nina phase. So it's very possible we can get huge rain coming in. This is, by the way, the latest uh, drought monitor here, and we did see a little bit of increase. That's going to be way over towards the tip in the desert area, which is pretty predictable when we head through the dry season. Monsoon season wasn't huge for us, so we just saw dryness starting to grow. Also, we saw record-setting temperatures, and that attributed to some of the growing drought conditions as well. All right, let's take a look at digging out of the drought, what that means, because drought in California has a lot of different layers to it. One of the biggest ones is how are our reservoirs faring? Shasta is our biggest reservoir in the state. And when we look at the line here, right here, this is where the reservoir was in 2021-22. Again, heading into that moderate La Nina event of 2022-23. Now, as I reveal the next line, this is what I mean digging out of the drought. We had a huge water year, and that helped to bring that number way up here, almost to total capacity. And then this past year, also very favorable. We saw a little bit better steady inflow into our reservoir. Right now we're at 64% capacity, which by the way, usually water managers, because of the need for water during the dry season, have to release a lot of water during the dry part of our year and start to make capacity for what is to come in the next water year. So we're right on the cusp of that our water year ending September 30th. So is it possible we could end up with a third year in a row of above average precipitation? In the past couple of decades, that's not been the case, but I was able to catch up with Dan McAvoy. He's with the Western Regional Climate Center. And he said, well, we're doing a little research on that and it may indeed be something we see. If you look back into the uh, uh, early 80s and late 90s, there were a number of periods with three, four, five years in a row um, of wet years. And so, you know, as a, um, an area of research that, that I've been working on and others have been focusing on, you know, the question is, you know, will we en ever enter back, you know, anytime in the near future into one of those more wetter periods where you have three, four, five years in a row 
that are above average? Or is this kind of a long-term aridification of the system and we're going to see less of those really wet years. This is the drought time series that he was referring to. And you can see, as I mentioned, over the past couple of decades, we've been more so favoring drought conditions than, say, wetter conditions. But from the years 1980 to the late 90s, we had several periods in here where we did see a couple of wet to three, four, five years in a row that we saw wetter than average conditions. Now that started to wane just a little bit in the 90s, but certainly more so than what we've been seeing here in the recent past. So how much does climate change have to do with this? Certainly there's a very clear connection between uh, a warmer atmosphere being able to hold more water vapor and um, therefore the, there be um, it, it makes it easier to have more extreme rainfall. And that's been documented pretty widely that that's already happening. We're seeing more of these um, um, extreme precipitation events and things like duration um, are changing. Well, you know, you look at an annual precipitation total, you might not see much of a trend, but you look at kind of the intensity and magnitude of individual storms, and those are increasing. A lot of excitement as we start to round out this current water year and head into the next one. There's always a lot of anticipation of what's to come. La Nina being a factor, climate change. So this is a look at where things have ended up for this water year. It's very likely we're not going to add a whole lot to it, at least statistically speaking. We're a little bit below average for Redding, South Lake Tahoe, and Sacramento. South Lake Tahoe really was one of the spots that we just didn't get a ton of precipitation. We saw a very late onset uh, going of our precipitation, which doesn't necessarily favor a whole lot of snow. Instead, it would be rain and a lot of runoff. But uh, coming off of what was a huge year last year. This wasn't horrible news for us. Palm Springs also with the deficit there, but big numbers along the coast. Last time we saw significant rainfall in downtown Sacramento, we have to go all the way back to May 4th. That's where we saw over half an inch of rain. And for the Central Sierra Snow Lab, I mentioned a late onset of our precipitation and May 5th, 26.4 inches of snow. That was the most that we saw all season all the way into May. So much of January and February is just really slow going. Drought monitor still looking okay. I did want to do a comparison here so you could see how it is starting to kind of move into more of that dryness factor. This is what we looked like last week at this time. And one of the more notable spots is going to be in the Central Valley. So keep your eye on about Sacramento and through the Central San Joaquin Valley. And you can see how that abnormally dry contour is starting to expand a bit throughout the Central Valley. These are big agricultural areas that provide a lot of the food uh, for not only the state, but for out, throughout the rest of the country. And that's why a lot of eyes are on that particular part of the state. So could La Nina start to help this? That may be one factor that we're hoping we at least get near average for uh, our precipitation. As far as our major water supply reservoir levels, even despite the fact that we are below capacity, only about 50 to 75 percent, one thing to note is we're above average for almost every reservoir. Folsom's a really small reservoir, comparatively speaking, to Trinity, Shasta, and Oroville. So this is going to see much bigger fluctuations, and water managers actually have to release a lot more because it can't hold as much if there were a big rain event. We can release pretty well because we have an auxiliary spillway there so they can release from the main, the auxiliary, and kind of uh, move water around pretty well. And our downstream uh, lakes and rivers are pretty big. They can hold the capacity. But given that it is a smaller reservoir, the incoming water has to be very closely watched. When we take a look at the Central Valley, now one thing to keep in mind with these reservoirs, the downstream rivers and lakes aren't quite as set up to hold a big outflow of water. So these have to be really closely monitored and it, it takes a lot of careful calculation to make sure we don't get over capacity here. Everything sitting at uh, about 50 to 75% of capacity and then uh, well above average. Millerton's at 99, but all things considered, everybody's at or above average. Building a water year is a unique thing in California. We have the rain starting in just about a couple of weeks, October through November. 
really, for those of us that have lived here long enough, Halloween's right about the time when trick-or-treaters are going out. We go, oh, geez, this is really when it's starting. But usually around Halloween is really when things start to get going. 50% of our annual precipitation, December, January, and February. And then when we look at that peak snowpack, that's going to come in in late March. I mentioned that highest snowpack or snowfall for one day alone didn't come until May last year and that's when we typically see our peak snow melt so it was a real tricky situation last year and for water managers because then we're starting to get into the period where we have the water at, at highest demand to feed the entire state during our driest and hottest time of the year july this past one was the warmest month on record for downtown sacramento so not only did we have dryness we had heat that combined to, to kind of accelerate some of the drought conditions going on. Now, our water year ends, as I mentioned, September 30th, and we'll get this whole thing going once again into next year. And that's when we actually start to see uh, the probab probability of La Nina building. Again, it has to meet that threshold. We're not quite there yet. This is kind of where we're uh, holding right now in that neutral phase, but it's likely uh, that we're going to head into La Nina. The way that things are playing out, it looks like most of the models show more so into November than, say, late September, early October. It's going to trend later and later, kind of peaking right through the winter season when we typically get 50% of our precipitation. Could be a really interesting December, January, and February all things considered, you know, you can get that one storm that is just a complete whopper and causes catastrophic flooding. So it doesn't take a duration of multiple events. It can be one event that just has a prolonged period of wetness. The first fall rain for us usually hits about October 7th with over a tenth of an inch of rain. Now, the latest day we had at least a tenth of an inch was December 11th. And the first day last year was pretty close to average on October 10th. But then we just dried out. We didn't see a whole lot after that. So the first rain doesn't necessarily mean, oh, the storm door is open. Here we go. It just means, okay, we at least got something in here. With each successive rain event, it helps to kind of put down some extreme fire conditions. And we've certainly seen our fair share this year throughout the state. The 8 to 14 day climate outlook does favor a likely cooler uh, weather pattern for Southern California. And as far as the likely wetter scenario, it does look like it is going to be holding to the north of us. What I think is really interesting, though, is the Climate Prediction Center really leaning into that La Nina type of typical pattern with a favorable Pacific Northwest being wetter, likely drier through Southern California and also uh, likely warmer throughout the entire state nearly for the 90-day climate outlook. So there's a lot to watch as we continue to follow the models and the probability of La Nina forming. We're going to keep these in-depth forecasts and explainers going as well as our weather specials. They're always on our ABC 10 Plus streaming app. You can get that on Roku and Apple TV as well as Fire TV. Stream it for live. Watch for free. It's live, local, and always on.